Hi and welcome back to a new video. Right now the market, the PC consumer market is quite interesting when you look at this from a perspective of upgrading your hardware, like investing. Because looking back, the previous two years were terrible, the, the availability was bad, the pricing was extremely high. And now because we're kind of like in a crisis a little bit, because for example, ASUS reported that they estimate a decrease of 25% when it comes to mainboard sales this year versus like last year. So they're definitely expecting a decrease in the PC consumer market, which is great for consumers because availability will be good and pricing will be great. For example, I bought this 3060 right here for 400 euro in Germany. No problem at all for availability. And even like a 3080 Ti, which is the, like the highest grade card I would personally recommend for upgrading. This is available for like 1,150 to 1,200 euro, which I think especially compared to last year or like one and a half years ago, this was like twice as expensive. So yeah, would definitely make sense upgrading right now. And then Intel contacted me a few weeks ago because they said, hey, what do you think about making a video in terms of CPU upgrading? Because some might still run older platforms, let's say a 4770K. And then you're thinking, is it worth even buying a 3060 or will it be too much CPU bottlenecked? And that's what we're going to try to find out in today's video. That is also the reason why we will start petting the cat. We have a C97 board here with a 4770K. That's the first setup we're looking at. It's a setup that's about nine years old. It's also paired with a very strong memory. That's also what I will try to do for all the setups we're testing today. It's a 2666C10 kit. It's probably one of the best you could get back then for DDR3. That's also what we will try to do with the different setups. So for example, if you were using a 4770K with something a lot slower, like 1866, for example, then obviously your results would be worse than what we will do in today's video. It will obviously depend on the game we are running right now. It is PUBG also in combination with the 3080Ti and the 4770K is running stock. I will now run all the benches with all the different games, also with the 3060, then overclock the CPU and see if this helps to fight the bottleneck. But you can see already in this situation, some of the cores are easily peaking to like 90 or 100%, which definitely shows that we're already in the bottleneck. We're starting with the 4770K and a 3060 because the 3060 is kind of on par also with an RTX 2080 depending on the game and benchmark. But this way you can get a feel of what the performance would look like if you would upgrade a 4770K platform with a 3060. Starting with Battlefield 2042. Here it's quite interesting because the performance difference is not that huge. Average FPS is almost the same. And also with 1% low, it's kind of okay. We have 51 with the 4770K and 61 with the 12900K. Moving over to PUBG, we can see a clearly different image. We have a smaller difference on the average. It's 288 versus 210, but on 1% low, we have pretty much half the performance on PUBG. It's 111 with the 4770K and 212 with the 12900K. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the difference is also a bit smaller. It's 70 on average with the 12900K versus 66 on the 4770K and 53 versus 43. So the difference there is still playable in my eyes. Far Cry 6 is also a bigger difference. We're going from 110 to 80 on average and 75 to 59. So on average, you can say if you're upgrading your platform that is 4770K based to a 3060, you will lose about 20 to 50% performance in various games versus running a very strong CPU like a 12900K. And now obviously, if the 3060 is already extremely bottlenecked, you can guess that with the 3080Ti, it will be even worse. Even with Battlefield, which was not that bottlenecked on the 3060, you can see it's a difference from 133 on average to 85, and 1% low is 51 versus 95. So that is a huge difference. And even bigger, we can see the difference in PUBG. It's pretty much half the performance. If you look at the 1% low, which is 301 versus 155. And here we are also going to insert an overclocking on the CPU on the 4770K. It was overclocked to 4.5 to see what kind of performance benefit you can still get from this. And it's about 10%. We increased to 267 and 170 FPS in PUBG. 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a bit smaller difference, but it's still definitely noticeable. From 108 to 90 and also from 78 to 59 FPS. A much bigger difference we can see in Far Cry 6. It's from 144 to 81 and also 91 to 59 in 1% low. Overall, if you're still running a Haswell based platform, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to invest in a very expensive GPU without also upgrading the CPU and even overclocking will only give you a small like upgrade. I guess that's because it's just lacking the amount of cores. The next architecture we're looking at is Skylake with the 6700K. Even though it has higher IPC because it's a different architecture, it was still only running four cores, which I think will definitely lead to, again, bottlenecking. Very similar to what we saw with the 4770K in PUBG, we see the same kind of behavior in Battlefield 2042 with the 6700K. A lot of cores constantly hitting the 100% mark, so we know for sure that we are in the CPU bottleneck. The question will just be, how much are we hitting the CPU bottleneck? The results are pretty much as expected, even though that the 6700K is superior to the 4770K, at least on paper, it's still lacking cores. You can clearly see that by looking at the battlefield figures, it's almost identical to the 4770K, but still far behind on the minimum FPS to the 12900K. And it gets even worse again on PUBG, we can see a gain between the 4770K and the 6700K, but still on the 1% low, we are clearly behind the 12900K. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see no difference between 4770K and 6700K, and we are still about 20% behind the 12900K. A lot worse in Far Cry 6, we are about 10% faster than the 4770K, but still far behind the 12900K. And clearly, if the 3060 is already bottlenecked, the 3080 Ti will be as well. In Battlefield, still about 30% behind the 12900K. Huge difference still in PUBG, it's about 40%, and even with overclocking, you only gain about like 8 to 10% additional performance. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, surprisingly, a quite small difference between the 12900K and the 6700K. I would guess that if you would not be able to look at FPS numbers, it's probably difficult to find a difference here. Far Cry 6 though, again, 40% difference to the 12900K. Even though the 6700K is about two years younger than the 4770K, I guess we can also throw it in the same boat with the 7700K, the KB Lake CPU, because 6700K and 7700K both only have four cores. And I guess that's the issue here, four cores nowadays is simply not enough anymore. So if you're upgrading to a 3060 or higher, you are definitely going to run in a CPU bottleneck in every situation. So you can theoretically probably upgrade to a 3060 above, just makes no sense at all. But if you're doing that, you have to keep in mind that the next upgrade would have to be the CPU for sure. But I have hope that using this platform with the Maximus 11, which is C390 with an 8700K, which is using six cores, this launched end of 2017, early 2018, so this is about four years old, four and a half years old. This should definitely work much better with a 3060. Same scene again, also same settings. And to be honest, I'm surprised that I see plenty of cores again hitting the 100% mark frequently. I expected the 8700K to do a bit better. So again, that's a clear indication for a CPU bottleneck. In Assassin's Creed, the 8700K is performing quite well with the 3060 versus the 12900K. I would personally say if you would have both systems in front of you, that subjectively speaking, you would probably not be able to tell a difference. Same goes probably for Battlefield, even though the influence on the minimum FPS is a bit bigger. But on Far Cry 6, the difference is definitely more noticeable, at least judging by the average FPS but the minimum FPS are pretty much identical. Only in PUBG, because it's a more high FPS shooter, the difference is bigger, but then again, also maybe a little bit less noticeable. Switching to the 3080 Ti, as expected, the difference will be bigger. We have 10 FPS difference in minimum versus the 12900K. In Battlefield 2042, difference about 14 FPS in the minimum, on average probably not noticeable. In Far Cry 6 though, the difference is definitely noticeable. Also, if you would think about using, let's say, a 144 Hz monitor, then it would definitely make much more sense to go with the speed of the 12900K. Only in PUBG, again, the difference is huge. 
Now I want you to look at this theoretical example. So for example, you are now running a setup with an 8700K, it's a DDR4 based platform, and you're thinking about you might have like 1200 euro as a budget, and you could theoretically just upgrade to a 3080 Ti. In that case, you should ask yourself, does it really make sense to upgrade to a 3080 Ti or should I upgrade also different parts? And I'm just looking at this from a perspective that you could keep your DDR4 kit, you buy a B660 board, it's also much cheaper than going for a C690. I mean, obviously you can get a 1000 euro board, but it's not going to get you any kind of performance. That's why a 200 euro B660 board might make a lot more sense. Then you get a 12700K and a 3070. And if we now go back to Far Cry 6 1080p with high setting, in this very specific benchmark or very specific game, this combination with the 12700K and the 3070 will perform better than an 8700K with a 3080 Ti. But again, this depends on your exact setting. It depends on the game and the way you're playing it. Because now if we switch again Far Cry 6 but with 4K and Ultra setting, you will see that a 3080 Ti would have been the better upgrade on your 8700K because you're much more GPU limited than CPU limited. In the end, it just means that you always have to look at your individual case. You have to look at what kind of games are you playing and what kind of setting are you using. Are you just running 1080p? Then it's very likely that you're running into a CPU limit very early. Are you running higher resolutions like 4K? Then the GPU is much more important. So you always have to look at the individual settings and not just purely throw everything inside your GPU, especially if you're running a lower resolution like 1080p, which is something a lot of people still do nowadays. In the end, upgrading always depends on your individual case, especially, for example, with the 4070 70K. The thing is, what we completely neglected is that back then probably you were running like a 970, for example, which did not require a very strong PSU. And if you want to upgrade now to a 3080 Ti, you probably also have to upgrade your PSU. That's something we completely neglected in the entire video. But what you also have to keep in mind is that sometimes selling the old hardware also pays off for a new CPU, for example. At least here, looking at the use prices for a 6700K and a C170 board, you can probably get a 12400 CPU for the used CPU and mainboard. And then you only have to invest, for example, in a new, um, let's say, B660 board. That sometimes also makes sense. That's something always to also consider is the resale value of your old hardware. That was a video with a lot of charts, but uh, I just wanted to look a bit at CPU bottlenecking. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.